Hello everybody, The Network Berg here and welcome back to the second video of the Network Fundamentals course that I'm offering here on YouTube for free. Let's quickly cover what networking basics are. What is a network? Well, a network is two computers or more, definitely a lot more if we're starting to look at a big scale network uh, that's exchanging data. It means the data is being sent and received between a client and a server. Um, you will see the client server relation pop up a lot in maybe some Cisco books or in an exam topic. It's literally just we have a computer that sits somewhere on the network and it's going to send a message to another computer that it wants to connect and then it wants to either send some data or it wants to retrieve some data from the remote computer, which would be the server. Um, it does use TCP IP to connect or for communication. Um, OSI model is very rarely used. What we referenced earlier was literally just that, a referencing point to understand the communication that's happening. But remember, TCP IP only uses five layers of communication. Here's a little picture of what the communication might look like. Let's say we were trying to retrieve some mail from um, Office 365 on your Outlook client. You would have your computer send a message to the server where it's connected, the exchange, and it would request some updates where it would pull down the mails from the remote server. I've put this uh, here, which we say TCP in action. This is just a Wireshark trace. I'm going to show this as well in this video, what a Wireshark trace looks like. But essentially what happens is the moment you connect, there is a process being followed, right? Bits are being translated or encapsulated into frames. The frames become IP headers or IP packets. The packets become data segments. And then finally, it reaches the remote side where it becomes de-encapsulated. And then the remote end gets the data, the payload. So if we look at a Wireshark frame of a packet that I sent from a laptop trying to get um, to Google, I believe, you would see the first line says frame. So that is actually um, just the frame being encapsulated. How many bits was on that frame and how many bytes were captured in, in those bits. It's This is the physical layer. This was on the interface connecting on my laptop. So that's your physical layer, layer one. Then the second layer, ethernet. We have the source and destination MAC addresses being applied to the frame, as you can see. So the, the third line, we have the internet protocol, which is the internet um, layer. It says it's IPv4 and it's giving me a source and destination IP address. And then we have the fourth layer, as you remember, that's the transport layer. We have the protocol and we can see, because when you see user datagram protocol, that's UDP and we can see the source and destination port. And then the fifth layer, as we said in TCP IP, ap application, session, not session, application, uh, presentation, and yes, session as well, are all one big layer in TCP IP. So that's the application layer. And in that fifth line, we see the main name system, but that's just the, the application that I was using, which was DNS. I've also put this in Word format for you here. I'm going to end off the presentation, but I'm quickly going to jump into GNS3, where I will quickly just demonstrate what is happening when two computers are communicating with each other. Let's just call this GNS3 test. So all I'm really going to be doing is I'm going to Create a virtual computer. It's a Firefox virtual client. And I'm going to bring in my actual computer, my physical computer into a, we don't even need to bring this onto a switch, but let's add a switch just for interest sake. Then you can imagine there was more than one computer here. Let's call that my PC. PC. 
I just like to change the symbols because it makes it easier for you guys. Just remember, I do offer a whole section on the blog explaining how to install GNS3 on your own computer so that you can do similar things yourself as well. Okay, so my computer, we're going to connect this to the Cisco switch. And the Cisco switch, we're going to connect to the remote computer. Great. So while the Cisco switch is starting up and the remote computer is starting up as well, well, let's see how long the remote computer takes. It's not that long. I just want to give this an IP address. Network 192.168.99.100. I'm not even going to assign a default gateway. Uh, it'll do it there, but we don't need it. When two computers on the same subnet communicate, they will broadcast directly on the switch or the VLAN they are in. So we don't need to worry about the default gateway because we're not going to break out to a different network or the internet. So now in theory, from this client computer, I should be able to ping my own computer, which is dot two. Can't ping it yet, but it's probably because the Cisco switch is still starting up. Yes, okay, this has booted up now. So if I go back onto this computer, there we go, I'm getting a response from my own computer. So what I actually want to show you is also in Wireshark, Okay, let's do a packet capture. I'm going to capture this on that VMNet2. Let's do that later. VMNet2, because that's connected on this GNS3 topology. Just double click it. Now it's seeing all of the traffic that's happening on the port. This is where Wireshark is very handy for troubleshooting. And we'll go over that in a different video. I just want to show you what happens when two computers are trying to communicate. So let's go from my actual computer into command prompt and let's ping 192.168.99.100 that's what I gave the other computer and I'm getting a response so if I go back into Wireshark I can stop this trace and then I can quickly do a filter here let's just uh, search we're looking for a string value 192.168.99 Okay, so there we can actually see the pings, the ping requests that were sent. If I click on this, it will show me some different layers here. So as you can see, we have four layers this isn't five layers because of the icmp traffic there's some arps as well so if we maybe was going to google as, again then we would see that application layer there um, but here you can see literally what is happening from a wireshark perspective there's my source 192.168.99.2 it's sending an ICMP packet to 192.168.99.100 and it is getting a reply. And the, the nice thing about Wireshark is you can drill down on these arrows and it will show you everything that's happening in, in the communication process. What's the frames? How many frames? Um, but this could potentially also pose a little bit of a risk, but um, for troubleshooting, Wireshark is really nice. So we can have a look at everything in a drop-down fashion as well. That's really what I wanted to show you. When two hosts communicate, it will start a session from one point and it will connect to a different point. So a source and destination and data is going to be exchanged with each other. Like you can see here on the way back, the same thing was happening. 192.168.99.100 had to send that reply back uh, to .2. And that's why we have that ping that was successful. Okay, and that is actually it for the video. That's what I wanted to show you. I'd like to thank you for watching. For more information, please visit the blog at www.thenetworkberg.com. Um, I will post some more links in the description of this video. Again, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.